Okay, we have a suitable universe, we have the necessary chemical elements, we have our own solar system, and the Earth is starting to produce some very primitive life forms. So what next? Well, as we have already seen, we are looking for a mechanism for greater and greater complexity. Going back to the analogy of the slot machine, we now have the 1055 amino acids in the right order. They are linked to other proteins and these are joined together in a primitive cell structure, which fulfills all the necessary functions to take energy from its surroundings. There is also a mechanism for these amino acids to be copied exactly using firstly an RNA type material and then eventually a more complex DNA. But what happens if my copying mechanism in these millions of sequenced amino acids makes a mistake in the process? Well, the probability is that I no longer have the winning sequence needed to live and I die. But just occasionally, Changing the sequence of the amino acids creates a new protein or a new structure which can actually obtain more energy than it could before. Here lies the basic tenet of evolution. This new molecule, protein or organism will take more of the available energy from its competitors and reproduce in greater numbers than them until they are displaced. They become the new kids on the block. But then one of them gets a copy that changes it, but allows it to get at more of the available energy. And we are off again, and the living entity is evolving. It turns out that the copying ability of RNA and DNA do indeed have these errors. The earlier forms of copying would have had a very high ratio of mistakes. The slight variations in copying mechanisms favoured those that were more accurate and kept more of their proteins in the correct order. Once we get a sense of this process, we need to consider the massive size of the Earth's habitable areas. The sheer amount of available life-forming chemicals, all the possible sources of energy, and add to this trillions of tiny organisms mutating, sometimes hourly, and adapting over billions of years. It's a bit like running a scientific experiment every day with a hundred trillion outcomes from which the very best of them becomes the experiment for the following day. The impossible suddenly appears quite probable and the complex again becomes quite simple. So we have a mechanism, evolution, which can be defined as the change of the genetic structure of a population over time. The most well-known part of evolution is known as natural selection, but I would like to be very clear on this. The successful survivors are not necessarily the fittest or the best, but they are the ones with the greatest reproductive success as compared to their own gene pool or population. DNA itself can be affected by other external factors, including that of radioactivity. And this can cause a wide range of mutations, mostly fatal, but occasionally a useful mechanism of the aeons of time. For example, the antifreeze enzyme that allows fish to survive in sub-zero temperatures in the Antarctic seas turns out to be mutated from a digestive enzyme it is worth looking at the catalyst for all of this, DNA, for a moment. The 
famous double helix is made up of chains of four elements that when unzipped, immediately recreate another identical zip. The information on these zips is absolutely incredible. It determines what proteins go where in 3D space to build every known creature on Earth. When you consider that these two have evolved and they now contain information that we no longer use today, the same information that we find in peas and bananas are in our genes. Yes, bananas actually have a 50% match to our DNA. You see, it is very much the case that the DNA evolving is the critical thing here. We and all the things around us are merely byproducts of its success. Now it is clear that evolution is a very controversial topic. It takes away man's place as special and separate from the rest of the animal kingdom. It also flies in the face of all the creation beliefs that have evolved with us. The evidence for it is, however, conclusive. It is estimated that 30 billion species of creatures have been produced over the Earth's history, but only about 1 in 120,000 leave behind some kind of record. And although these fossils are therefore very rare indeed, less than one bone in about a billion makes it, the ones we see all support the evolutionary theory. Firstly, there are many species that no longer exist, and many transitional species. Species that fill the gap between dinosaurs and birds, for instance. These all fly in the face of a creation time, or an intelligent designer. There really is no other reason for their existence. Secondly, there are many similar features across animals, but like the whale having fingers or small hind legs, there are often no good design reasons for them. It is only when we work back to the whale's mammalian ancestry, and therefore evolution, that it starts to make any sense at all. Thirdly, there is a geographic distribution of species. Most marsupials happen to live in Australia. But why are there no wolves there? Now either there was a descended line through an evolutionary process, or a creator decided to put them in some suitable places, and randomly, not in others. The more we come to know of genetics, the more evidence supports evolution. For example, we can match the coming together of human chromosome number 2 to the fusion of two other chromosomes, primate chromosomes 12 and 13, and these fit exactly into place. There really is no other explanation for this happening unless a designer was trying to trick us into thinking we had evolved. We can see evolution through natural selection working in very short timescales. The peppered moths in industrial Britain were pale to hide on the similar coloured birch trees. But as the smog blackened the tree trunks, the paler ones were eaten, and the darker ones survived and became the species. When the air was cleared up, the trees turned lighter again, and the darker ones were eaten. And eventually the species became pale again. So could such a simple idea, such random events, lead eventually to us?